Welcome to our wee studio here in Fife. I'm Wendy and today we're going to look at the cattle on Scotland's Ark of Taste. But before we do, I just want to mention a few of the other animals that we haven't touched on, uh, notably the hens, the ducks and the geese. And that's because they are extremely rare. You won't be able to roast them on Sundays. They are still a very, very, very rare breed because mainly of people's enthusiasm for crossbreeding. So that's work in progress. If you live locally to some flock, you might get some eggs if you're very lucky. Other um, animals are affected by their habitat being threatened, such as the native Scottish goat um, and the mountain hare. So for those reasons, they're very um, rare to get as well. So um, there are reasons why we haven't cooked with them today. So back to the cattle. And there's four breeds at the moment on Scotland's Ark of Taste. And we're scouting for another couple perhaps next year. Um, so we've got hillbred Highland cattle, native bred Aberdeen Angus, the belted Galloway and the Shetland Kai. They all have the most fabulous flavours, but they are all different too. They have their own characteristics and there are some things that they all have in common. Heritage breeds, old land race breeds, are always going to be slow growing. They live on their native heath, whether that be pasture or hill. No grain, no substitutes, no additives. It's totally nature. This is all about the breed and the feed. They're very good mothers, um, they calve well, and they were dual purpose animals. In days before they talked about dual purpose, they were house cows and were all used for dairy and for beef, which is a very, very sustainable way of farming. There is nothing, nothing unethical about these lovely heritage animals and that healthy, sustainable way of farming, nothing at all. It's when you start developing animals and they get heavier and heavier. They need grain to supplement their diet as they get larger and they poach and damage the soils because of the weight of them. So these breeds are all on a small size, small frame, packed with flavour. So you won't get the big cut kilos that um, some markets look for, but what you lose in kilos, boy, you gain in taste. So we're going to start with the Shetland Kai. Here's the Shetland Kai here, and with often with heritage breeds, they have a lovely range of colours, so don't expect them all to look the same colour. And here in the pan, I've got some Sassernet cooking here. Hopefully it will sizzle away in a minute. This is Sassernet. Now, it may look like a bit of mince to you, but in the olden days, and still, there is a guy on Shetland that is producing it again, and it's, it's um, only from one Kai. So when you slaughter your one Kai, your Shetland cow, Kai is the old name for the cow. Um, then there was always going to be the trimmings and the scraps and you would, you would slaughter them towards the end of autumn, early winter. You wouldn't want to feed them all winter, but you'd want to feed yourself all winter and you need to think of ways of preserving it. So salting was very much part of that. So this is quite a salty meat made from the trimmings, um, added some spices. So this makes great burgers on a winter's night with a fried egg. Um, and in a nice floury roll, delicious, perfect. Um, but they're also good for meatballs and they're good for stuffing, for force meat. So lots of versatile. I keep some in the freezer, but in the olden days, as I say, the salting gave it that preservation for over the winter. So that's our Shetland Kai. I've got some in the pan here. You don't need to add any extra oil at all because there's a little bit of oil from the, the trimmings. I've just turned these over and they're going to be delicious. The smell is torturing me. It's lovely. And as I say, these are the Kai. These are from Uddedale Farm on Shetland, where there's a few devoted people that are really supporting this breed. I've also got here um, a lovely roast Kai that I cooked just this morning. It's still lovely and warm. And oh my, it's just <laughs> torture looking at it and not eating it. But I'm going to serve that at the end of this little clip with some chanterelles because we have some chanterelles we picked in Aberdeenshire just the other day. So I've got some butter here in the pan and we'll just let these cook away in there with a little bit of salt. Now we've got a salt on the Ark of Taste. So we've got salt from the Isle of Skye. Actually, the little spoon was given to us by uh, a delegate at Terramadra from Wales. So a rather nice Terramadra memory with our, our Welsh salt spoon. And a little bit of pepper. And that's the chanterelles underway. So next, let's talk Highland. 
Now the Highland cattle are picture postcard Scotland. You see them everywhere. And we have some on the poster here. And again, you'll see they come in different colours. They come in the golden, they come in blonde, black, and what's called brindle, which is a little bit more tigery, you know, a little bit of sort of marmalade stripes going on and browns and very, very beautiful. But the thing about the Highlanders, again, is they've been developed and some of them are big Arnie Schwarzeneggers and you don't want that. What you want is a lovely little um, old fashioned hillbred Highland cattle. And that's what they have on the Glen Gorm estate. And when we were doing the research about the Highlanders, all roads seem to lead back to Glen Gorm, which is on Mull, um, where they have the, the cattle outdoors hefted on the hills and can trace them back um, over 170 years. And the, the marbling and the veining in all these old heritage breeds makes them absolutely delicious. And the Highlander from those hills eating that terroir is really quite gamey and absolutely, oh, fantastic flavour. So again, look out for the ones, ask about the breed, ask about the feed, because if they're on the lowlands um, and very, very big, they can be having grain in their diet. And that grain changes the, the, um, the components, the nutrients of the meat and changes the flavour. So it's really, really important that you get animals that are grass or hill fed. So here we have some more goodies in the oven here. And this is a little shepherd's pie I made with the Glengorm beef. And it's delicious. So what you're going to see here is this lovely rich gravy. And I've put in a layer of carrots as well, there's local carrots. And these are Edsel Blue potatoes, also on the Ark of Taste straight from our, our kitchen garden here. And what you'll see is just beautiful meat and beautiful gravy. And there is not a single bit of any commercial gravy brownings be near this. This is totally natural. A lovely gamey dish, really delicious. And most of these producers are on the website and are also, um, will send it mail order. So if you're not up in the region, they'll post it to you. It's good to support these local producers. So also here, we've got some black pudding. Now black pudding, you might think is a rather a, a strange thing. You see it everywhere in all the shops. But the interesting thing is that 99.99% of them will be made with dried blood. Dried blood is a commodity. It's on the market um, and they buy it in bulk. There are very, very few places that make it with fresh blood. And that's because you really need a holy trinity. You need a butcher with the farmer and the abattoir nearby, because otherwise the blood clots and coagulates and you don't get the black pudding. And the history of the black pudding is really interesting because the drovers would bring the cattle on hoof from the highlands to the market and they would actually um, make a little cut in the neck and drain a little blood, add it to their oatmeal and cook it. And that was the start of the blood pudding. And that was how they had a really nutritious meal on the go, on the road. Um, so this is blood pudding that is made with fresh blood and it's got a slightly gingerbread flavour. You really, really do notice the difference. So it's rather interesting and very delicious. They come with a little skin on, so you need to take the skin off around the side. You can bake them or fry them. They're delicious with, um, uh, again, a fried egg or sauté potatoes is lovely. And what I'm going to do with them today is another favourite of ours, which is with our own beets. Um, so these are from the garden with a little bit of chive butter. So they've, uh, you can also pickle them. They're lovely with vinegar with the, the um, the black pudding as well but these are really delicious so we're going to have it with with beets today and that's our fresh blood black pudding there it is meanwhile our sassamit here are ready sizzling away we're cooking cooking with logs here i love cooking with logs it works really really well and heats the whole house so here's our little sasser net patties and they are so delicious. Now, our 
Red Pudding, our Sassamit, our Highland Cattle. Aberdeen Angus is the next one and you would think from looking at menus across the world that Aberdeen Angus are so common. What on earth are they doing on the Ark? But a certified Aberdeen Angus only needs to be sired by an Angus bull. And indeed, if you're in America, the cows only need to be black. What's that all about? So for a native bred Aberdeen Angus, there is two families in Scotland that we have a lot to thank. The Tukes and the Suitors are the ones that have been absolute trailblazers and the strong supporters of the, the true Aberdeen Angus left in Scotland. Pure bred, grass fed, not developed. So they're a little bit smaller than some of these arnies that you see in the fields all muscle bound um, and they're not getting grain and the flavour and the marbling and the taste is just to die for. It's so good. Here's a picture of the ones at the suitors. Uh, they're all black in the picture but again they come in ginger so there's a, again a slight mix of colour but beautiful animals and again just not that big. Um, not developed, slow maturing and boy the, the rewards you get from supporting these producers and tasting that meat. So I didn't roast off some Aberdeen Angus today, instead I've got some of the Tukes cured Angus. Um, so they do a sweet cure with a little bit of spice and it just shows that you can, you can do other things with these beautiful heritage meats. And um, this is ready to eat and it is delicious with a fruit, maybe a pear or a strawberry in season or a little bit of soft cheese as a charcuterie platter or even for breakfast if you like a sort of continental breakfast, a bit of luxury. That's so good. So remember, things are not always as they seem. When you see Angus on a menu, think twice, ask questions because um, if they don't say the farm they're from and uh, you look at the ark, you'll see that actually you're probably getting a crossbred. So could be could be quite pleasant, but it's not the real deal for the ark. So something to think about. Now here we've got some chanterelles still cooking away in the butcher there. And we have a couple of last things to say. One is we have got the belt of Galloway, last but not least. And there are some belted Galloways out there, but we've still got to source um, a producer that will give us the butchery that we look, we're looking for on that. So that's work in progress at the moment. But the belted Galloway itself and the breed is on the Ark of Taste. And there are some fantastic breeders being very careful with the bloodlines. And the belty is the one with that white belt round it. The drovers actually love the belty because they quite often put them at the front. So in the dark, you could see the belty. And they've got these teddy bear ears and a bit fluffy. And that's because rather than having a thick layer of flat fat along their back they've got a double coat um, and the meat is sublime so that's another one to think of. Now just before we bring out the, the Shetland Kai at the end here you might have noticed I've got a little pig sitting here and this is as a little as a reason for this this is as a reminder why have we not got any pork on Scotland's Ark of Taste? Well because our native Scottish pig the Grease was extinct in 1940 so this little guy is a little ceramic model of the Lindrid pig, which is a native breed to Sweden and indeed on the Swedish Ark of Taste. This is not made to scale, but <laughs> it's a very delicious pig, but we don't have one in Scotland. So that in itself is as a model in that tale. So here we've got that beautiful Shetland Kai again. Um, slow pot roasted, slow cooking is very important for native breeds and it really makes a difference. And I've got these chanterelles that we picked yesterday cooked in nothing less than butter, of course. And a spoon would be much better, but never mind. We will manage beautifully with a fork. And here we've got these beautiful chanterelles. So whichever one of these you go for, remember, ask your butcher where it's been sourced from. Look on the website to find out where you can obtain them. Cook them slowly. Don't look for size, look for flavor. And the juices from this Shetland Kai is sensational. I skimmed off a little bit of the fat and that will be stovies and dripping for roast potatoes and all sorts. So absolutely nothing goes to waste in our house. It is just delicious. So enjoy the art produce. And I think I've probably got you all feeling very envious of what we're gonna have for our tea tonight. But you too can have it. Get Googling, find these art produce and support them. Thank you.